second half on a powerful point of view now power sustainability uh, or rather power sustainable energy is shifting from a dependence on energy form of oil to electricity for some time now kenya has been embracing the shift trying to move into matters electric vehicles and this afternoon i'm joined by jasmine a reporter uh, to give us the latest on what is happening in the e-mobility sector. Jasmine Murani, talk to us about matters e-mobility. I'm coming to you live from Even Business Park here on Airport North Road and a lot is happening here. We are looking at electric mobility and for someone who may not know, electric mobility is the use of electricity um, to power transport infrastructure in place of um, fossil fuels. And as you might already know, Kenya is very well suited for e-mobility because upwards of 85% of power in Kenya is renewable um, power. And with me here is Sam Kamunya, Head of Business Development at Basigo. We just want to talk to him and get a little bit more from him. Welcome, Sam. Hi, afternoon. Too. Afternoon, Sam. And just to start us off, maybe just tell us a little bit about Basigo, what it does. Uh, so Basigo is uh, a Kenyan startup uh, that is in the interest of revolutionizing public transport in Africa. And we talk about public transport, I'm talking about um, PSVs, uh, private transport and uh, institutional transport. These are schools and companies. So Basigo uh, wants to give diesel operators, Matatu investors, uh, an opportunity to have an alternative in their next purchasing decision between a diesel bus and electric bus. That is what we are looking to do. And uh, how we do that is by bringing to you products uh, that, do public, that are able to cater for public transport uh, services at an affordable cost through a subscription model we call pay as you drive. Yes. So when can Kenyans expect to see these e-buses um, on their roads? So um, what you what you may, you may be aware actually is uh, we already have two buses in existence for the last nine months. They've been operating in between uh, major t uh, estates in Nairobi and the city centre. One does the airport route and the other one does the Buruburu route. So with these two operators, we have been piloting these buses for the last uh, one year now. Next month we'll do one year. Over 200,000 kilometers uh, in operations, over 200,000 customers. And uh, what we have been doing is piloting to be able to prove the concept of electric mobility is possible and workable in Nairobi and in Kenya. And through that now, we are bringing, visibility will be more, because we have now just brought in 15 electric buses and will be starting operations in the next few weeks. Yes. And in terms of cost, maybe, can you please compare the price tag on the diesel buses vis-a-vis -vis the electric buses? Everywhere in the world, as you may know, uh, electric buses are expensive. Uh, they cost uh, 3x, 4x the price of a diesel bus. However, as Basigo, we are bringing in a financing model where we are able to make the bus affordable, the electric bus affordable. So what we do is that we are matching the price of an electric bus to the price of a similar capacity diesel bus. Our bus is a little bit premium, has Wi-Fi, has CCTV, uh, is noise free, it does not emit any uh, carbon uh, into the uh, uh, environment. So with that we peg a little bit premium on the bus and we're selling the bus at 5.8 million shillings. Yes, So it's affordable just as you will be able to afford a uh, normal uh, diesel bus. Yes. And we understand that these buses will need charging because they are electric. Can you talk to us about the charging stations? How accessible are they? Where are they? So what we have done is, um, among the other things we're trying to mitigate uh, with the electric buses, number one I've told you is about the high upfront cost. So number two is the infrastructure that comes with electric buses. It also um, requires a lot of uh, capital expenditure. So what we have done, we will simulate, we will simulate what the normal uh, passenger, the public service industry does. In the evening, they come into a petrol station along their route of operations to be able to park the bus and refuel their buses. That is what we are doing. As Basigo, we are mapping out our charging stations in Nairobi, conveniently along the routes uh, that these buses will operate. So currently we are developing one charging station on uh, Waiyakiwe. We're in the process of closing another one on Thika Road. We are doing one in Eastlands, 
Uh, currently where we are is one of the charging stations is along the airport north road which will easily serve Mombasa road and the eastern bypass. Yes. Nice. And finally in terms of spare parts and technicians to fix these buses just in case something goes wrong, maybe tell us what can buyers expect? Uh, thank you for that. Um, as we are talking, I've been told you there are several challenges with electric buses. So the first challenge I told you is uh, the high upfront cost, and we are solving it using the pay-as-you drive model. The second one is uh, the in charging infrastructure, which we are providing to the operator uh, as long as they're on the subscription model. The third one is technical expertise and spare parts. It's a challenge everywhere in the world. Currently, we are authorized to do all services, all service maintenance and repair of the electric bus. And uh, the spare parts we have in stone. We have already formulated, we have already visualized and, sim and um, are simulated the parts that the buses need uh, in case of anything. So, being the only authorized uh, dealers of the electric buses in the country, we have plenty in stock. We have imported everything. We have uh, worked with local partners to develop some of the spare parts also locally. And what we can be able to tell you is that we guarantee you a 98% uptime of the bus for the bus to be up. So in case of any breakdown, we have a trained technical expertise. Uh, they've been able to be trained by BYD and they've been able to maintain the two buses in operation 98% uptime on the road. So we are confident enough to say that you can be able to repair this bus, service these buses within the agreed time within our lease. Yes. Okay, thank you very much for that. A lot is happening here, as I told you. There's a bus charging right there. And what we're seeing is that in line with Kenya Vision 2030, e-mobility is being taken up by a lot of um, investors in the Matatu sector. And I just want to talk to one of them. With me is George Givenji. He is a, a member of the Matatu Owners Association. He will just be talking to us about a number of issues um, and whether they are ready to take up the buses. So, can you go with the George? Uh, thank you very much. My name is uh, George Gedenji, Chairman Oma uh, Services Limited, a member of Matatu Owners Association in charge of uh, Jogo Road. Um, uh, we have uh, already undergone um, all the uh, the document documentation of uh, the electric buses and this is a noble business idea which we have accepted uh, because uh, in comparison with what we are already having on our roads for the last 20 years this is uh, a viable cost effective and uh, profitable to us as uh, matato business people Right, and in terms of the cost, how do, how do the electric, electric buses rather compare to the diesel buses from a Matatu owner um, perspective? Uh, well, um, the electric buses' initial cost is, uh, is on the higher side. But uh, effective costs and the life of an uh, electric bus, considering the eight years, it is even better and even less costly because uh, going by the figures every 33 seater today is consuming 7,500 a day that translates to 225,000 yeah, in a month in a year it's around 1.8 million so within the next 8 years the same bus, diesel bus will consume 21 million point six uh, meaning uh, the bus, the electric bus is not expensive as compared to the diesel in the long run. Okay, and maybe for the passengers, are the fare, fares going to be cheaper for them? Um, the same to be fair in the business. We have to pass this to the passengers too. And uh, uh, the fare has to be relatively lower as compared to diesel fare. Uh, driven uh, uh, matatus as investors in the matatu industry are you worried about the fluctuating uh, prices of power and how that may affect your business um within a day we have 24 hours and we've not had cases whereby uh we have power failure it's not frequent for 24 hours so should there be any issue with power is rescheduling the charging times. So there is that flexibility, meaning we cannot run out of power to stop the buses.
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Givenji. So that is all we have for you, Noah, from here. As you can see, the Matatu owners are ready to take up these buses because obviously it does make their business uh, make a lot more financial sense in the long run. My name is Jasmine Murani. Back to you in studio, Noah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jasmine. Murani for that update on matters e mobility and as we finish africa data center is looking to expand their 